Today we're going to try the ultimate rags to riches challenge. Is it possible to build a thriving theme park with no money? Can I make 1 million out of absolutely thin air in this roller coaster tycoon? Well, using the power of science to craft the ultimate source of happiness, we just might be able to pull it off. It cost Disney $400 million to build Disney World in Florida. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to see if I can build a profitable theme park starting with absolutely nothing. We have zero dollars and as you can see, a gigantic empty plot of land with absolutely nothing on it. Welcome to Britland, ladies and gentlemen, the most British theme park in the world. And just like, of course, Britain itself, we have no money whatsoever. Our aim is simple, build a theme park and make money. Our goal is to make one million, and if we can achieve it, the Queen has promised to make me the new Chancellor of the Exchequer. So with everything to play for and potentially the entire UK economy on the line, it's time for me to use my glorious powers as a professional video game exploiter to perfectly balance this impossible challenge. So grab yourself a cup of tea ladies and gentlemen and let's dive into the video. So welcome to the game of Park Tech ladies and gentlemen. It is basically Roller Coaster Tycoon if it was released in a modern time and was incredibly fun. It's not quite as broken as Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 but that doesn't mean I can't exploit the hell out of it. Now of course just like all good roller coaster games we need to build ourselves attractions and hopefully people will then come over and ride on those attractions like say the British teacups. Who wouldn't want to ride on some British teacups? The issue is, in order to build any of these rides, you need money. We could try and place as many carousels as we like, but we quite simply don't have the funds. So how are we going to make our first bit of money and have enough cash just to actually get a roller coaster down? For that, ladies and gentlemen, we need to take out a Wonga loan. We're going to take out this loan for 12,000 and hopefully using this, I'm going to be able to build ourselves a coaster. Something to really get the money going. Now, if we're going to be able to convince Susan Williams here to enter our park, we're going to need to actually provide some kind of reason to enter. No one's going to arrive if we're charging people one pound to enter, and there's quite simply nothing on the other side of these gates. So let's build ourselves a ride. And we're going to go for one of the cheapest rides available, the Wild Mouse, with a very special blueprint design. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the Golden Goose. It is a perfectly balanced ride with absolutely no issues whatsoever. You might notice it's incredibly short and also goes underground. And this is because it is ever so slightly completely and utterly broken. But yes, for just the low, low cost of 1,700, we can build ourselves a roller coaster. Now you might be thinking, why on earth is this roller coaster called the Golden Goose? It's incredibly short and it doesn't look very exciting. Well, that's because it is. If you take a look at these amazing values here, you'll see that the excitement rating is incredibly high, the intensity is high, and the nausea is very low. This basically makes it one of the most perfect rides in the universe, despite the fact that it quite literally goes up, down, does a loop, comes back up again, has a little bit of an up and down, and then just repeats. Put simply, on paper, this ride absolutely sucks. However, due to the perfect balance of this game, it's actually the greatest thing the world has ever seen. So let's build ourselves a queue to the most disappointing ride in the universe. So this right here is going to be our first ride. We're not going to call it the Golden Goose, no, 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 no. This bad boy is going to print money, but it's going to make people absolutely miserable and disappointed on the inside. Consequently, it's going to be the City of London. That's right, this is the perfect example of the up and down life of the City of London, where you can start with high hopes and dreams and just be crushed by the reality that it basically sucks. All whilst we suck not only your soul, but your money from your wallet. It's a perfectly balanced ride and it's now open for business. So this bad boy should start bringing in a few guests, but we're going to need more than just one ride if we're going to really get people going for our doors. Consequently, for people who want a slightly lower intensity rating, we're going to build this right here. This this is the cheese ride. It's very similar to the Golden Goose, except it takes a little bit longer, costs a little bit more money, but it should make us around about two grand per month. We can even charge $19 for this bad boy, and for some reason, people are going to be happy to ride it. So we have two guests in our park, both of whom have paid $1 to be here. Let's try and get them onto some of the rides. Ah, uh, Susan Williams is heading for the Wild Mouse. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. They spent £1 to be here, and now they're about to spend £19, yep, to go on the Wild Mouse. Oh, I hope they enjoy it. I really hope they do. Look at them go! Susan's having a grand old time. Let's hear what they think. Oh, I want to go on Wild Mouse. Yeah! Woo! Oh, you're feeling great. Your happiness is going up and up and up. It's going off the charts. Oh, yeah. I hope you have a grand old time, Susan. Lovely stuff and background we go to the start. That's one ride complete, ladies and gents. Uh, now, the issue is Wild Mouse is currently a little bit too expensive for a lot of people, so I'm going to crank down that price. For the low, low cost 
cost of just 15, which now should mean people are willing to actually ride it, because yes, it is a bit of a pricey bastard. But already you'll notice we're starting to actually turn a bit of a profit. We've made 42 pounds just from the park admissions, and we've made 190 from the ride admissions. For an opening weekend, this is already looking rather good, and best of all, people are actually enjoying this. But now we of course need to keep people here forever. That means we need to farm money off of them. So money farming building number one, it's an ATM ladies and gents. Next up we need to provide toilets. Toilets of course that you have to pay for. That's right it's going to be 50p to pee. Now pro tip you could be serving your park guests pizzas but this only gets rid of their hunger. What you really want to do is sell them incredibly salty burgers and fries. This not only decreases their hunger it increases their thirst which means they then have to go and buy a drink. It's just basic park profiteering 101. Then we're going to offer them some nice good old fashioned bubbly tea. Alright I'm going to rename the toilets to spend a penny give a penny, the burgers are now salty bread, and the bubble tea will now become danger tea. If you don't know why it's danger tea, it's because it's full of these little black balls which you choke on. I mean, like, why would you add deadly hazards to the inside of tea? It's a safe beverage of happiness. Why? Now, evidently the park guests want more rides to ride on, so we must provide them with more rides. And naturally that means the greatest ride of all time, the spinning teacups of happiness. Here they are, the beautiful, beautiful spinning teacups. It's not necessarily the highest excitement, because effectively it's just a rotating cup and you yourself become the tea. That in itself is a dream for any British person to be transformed into the nutritious enjoyment that is tea. Oh, I've just noticed it's raining. Now rain is fantastic. Of course, people don't like rain, but don't worry. That means you can sell an umbrella shop. Now an umbrella shop is glorious because when it's raining, you just jack up the price for an umbrella and people are willing to pay anything, like say $40. <laughs> When it rains, it really rains, ladies and gents. Right, I've now redesigned this ride over here, and it is now the brand new ride of Skegness, ladies and gentlemen. How can you tell it's Skegness? Well, it's very obvious. It is surrounded by the screams of the damned, and is nearly constantly on fire, just like the real thing. But this lovely ride is going to start churning out lots of profits. Alright, I'm going to create a brand new ride. This is going to fill you with a deep sense of dissatisfaction and depression, and it's going to be called British Weather. Of course, in order to act accurately simulate British weather, we're going to need large amounts of fire, constant splashing, water jets spraying out of near everything, a near endless quantity of fog, and the incessant smoke of every single vapour in a 50 mile radius. There we go, lovely. We have created British weather, and people are loving it. Look at these guys. Oh my goodness, the cues to experience British weather are off the scales. My goodness. People really just want to get burnt and splashed and miserable all at the same time. Right now we still need to pay off our starting loan but otherwise things are looking relatively decent. Last month we managed to make almost 2,000 off of our rides and I think we might be able to do the same this month. Oh and it's raining again so that means people are buying umbrellas. Okay let's crank up that price. Crank up that price ladies and gentlemen. Let's go straight up to five dollars. Actually let's go even higher. Six dollars. Six dollars. They still think it's good value for money. God damn it they think they're getting a good deal. No you're not allowed a good deal. No. <laughs> right it's now ten dollars for an umbrella. There we go, now it's no longer a good deal, and I get to make money. Right, we're back ladies and gentlemen, and Britland is doing fantastic as always. We've added in one extra ride here. This is the M6 motorway simulator. It is a very simple ride, which is mostly underground and basically involves riding little cars. Now you might be asking, hang on a second, there's a supply surplus of tea decreasing prices by 15%. Ladies and gentlemen, now's the time to buy. Anyway, as I was saying, the reason we've built this ride practically underground is for one very important reason. Rides built underground after the latest DLC of this game practically get an extra plus 15 excitement rating, meaning that this ride here is way more exciting than any road car ride should be. Look, here they come now. Look, it's a car going incredibly slowly, yet for some reason this is even more exciting than Skegness. That's right, the M6 motorway in a traffic jam is more interesting than Skegness. Anyway, I'm going to uh, cheese it a little bit more by building even more of these wild mice that go underground because uh, they're just perfectly balanced and are generating us a copious quantity of money. Right, we've constructed two brand new rides. Ride number one over here is the TV licensing ride where you can ride it and the ride determines whether you've paid your TV license. Of course, if you haven't, you are shot and killed, as is the British way. The other ride is the North, ladies and gentlemen, a one-for-one -one perfect recreation of anything north of London. As you can see, it is full of coal mines, death, and fog. This is, of course, 100% accurate because I am 
from the north. Trust me, I've seen it. This is everywhere. Anyway, how are our new rides doing? TV licensing, it's looking good. It needs more decorating, but that's okay. Meanwhile, the north. Oh, hi, decoration stats. Lovely. My goodness, people absolutely love our park. The ratings are incredibly high. Happiness is great. Immersion is good. People think the north is awesome. Well, <laughs> evidently they haven't lived there. Oh god. But hey, this is generating us a wonderful amount of money, so naturally we can probably up the price a bit. What's this? I can't afford the North. Who can't afford the North? It's like four pounds for an entire bloody mansion up there. Jeez. Oh my goodness, we're doing absolutely fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. We're making copious amounts of money. The park is looking great. People are loving the North for some reason, but I've decided we need something very important. For example, this man here, Ched Smugly. Now, Ched is a bit of what we in the UK would call a knob, simply because this man is a litterer, which means he goes around and ruins the park. So far, all he's done is gone on the north. He hasn't even bought a product, but as soon as he does, he's going to litter it, and we can't have that, so we put Ched in a special location. This up here is the Podium of Death, and it's where people like Ched belong. Now, he doesn't particularly know where he is, but that's okay, because he can stay on the Podium of Death, and if he ever thinks of escaping, well, it's a 1,000 foot fall into a pool of very shallow shallow water, which is of course entirely fenced off, and it's also home to a deadly shark. Yes, this is the perfect anti-littering deterrent. He will now stay up here until he starves himself to death, or decides to take the long drop, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god, a bus drop of 43 guests who prefer medium intensity rides. Wait, hang on a second. Are these people who have committed to going into the park regardless? If that's the case, we're going to temporarily jack up the entrance fee. It's now going to be $18 to enter. Yes, an extra $10, just because a whole bunch Bunch of you decided to arrive and oh yes you're willing to pay it oh yes i love money thank you game <laughs> oh dear so i realized we actually need to shock people on the tv licensing ride which means we need a whole bunch of spark emitters ladies and gentlemen just to constantly spark this place up and if someone gets hit by a little bit of flowing electricity well that's their fault not mine of course the final most important aspect the flames to the face upon exit yes now upon finishing the ride people are cooked in the heat of a thousand suns let us Let's take a ride on TV licensing, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful, simple ride. One gets to simply check and become one with the TV licensing. We climb up our first slope and immediately go underground, which is a wonderfully exciting process. Wow, such fun. Then we have to wait here for two minutes and watch as the people opposite us are cooked alive in the flames and fire. Then we get to go up and down just a little bit and soon it's our time to die. So down we go, we snap our necks through the lateral g-force and then cooked alive in an incinerating inferno. What a glorious ride. Oh my goodness, we're making so much money. We're up to 20 grand now. Yes, this is glorious. Truly glorious. No, I think I can just let time fly and just see how much money we make. I reckon we can keep this bad boy going forever. Anyway, how's Ched doing? Ched, you're doing great. There's no high intensity ride around here that interests you. Oh, that's too bad because you're about to collapse due to exhaustion. Your immersion is ruined. Your happiness is collapsing. But that's okay, Ched, because I have some for you. The sweet release that you crave, Ched. That's right, because by simply removing the ground upon which you're standing, I can make you fall all the- oh my god! No, Ched! I mean, he lives, but my goodness, the man just fell like 7,000 feet. Good lord. Right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We now have almost 50 grand in the bank, and we're making about 7,000 a month. This is absolutely glorious indeed. At the same time, I've also discovered that we can add signs to this game. So I've added in a subliminal messaging corner, <laughs> hint, hint, as well as a beautiful high resolution picture of a corgi, a reminder of what cup of tea to drink, and whose merchandise mug to drink it from, and the most evil sounding tourism campaign that we as a nation ever did. Visit Britain, which sounds more like a fret of visit Britain before Britain visits you. Oh my goodness, we're about to cross into 100,000, ladies and gentlemen, 100,000. It's just around the corner. Here we go. Wabam, we did it. That's 100,000. We're one tenth of the way to our goal. Oh my goodness, look at our park rating. We've done fantastic. Look at these amazing park rating factors. Everyone loves it. They think it's glorious. And the park entrance fee is a good deal. Okay, right, that's fine. We'll increase it. Up to 10 pounds we go. All right, I'll be back once I earn even more glorious quantities of money. All right, the park is doing great. We're up to almost 1,500 guests. We're making about 12,000 a month. 
month. And ladies and gentlemen, I've added in a few more rides, including my brand new favorite, Scotland. It's pretty much the exact same as the North, except it's got more flags and really hot dudes in tartan, and of course, cannons pointed perpetually at the rest of Britland. Ah, glorious Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got some terrible news. Four people just died on a crash in Skegness. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh no. Uh, I mean, that kind of makes the ride closed. Um, it's made people quite upset because, uh, you know, five people say I don't want to risk my life on Skegness. Eight people say I can't wait. Now, temporarily, of course, because someone died, we're going to lower the price. And in order to properly honor the five fallen, we shall bury them next to the ride they love so dearly. Because, of course, it was a station break failure. So quite literally, they came into the station, flew right out the end and landed into these open graves. Oh, uh, this game it really is a torture simulator anyway we're up to making um about fifteen thousand per month now which is incredible yes yeah, so we're almost halfway to our lovely goal of one million now overall park rating isn't the best because of course there was a recent crash but um we now know it's okay it's not the ride's fault oh look at this brave soul being the first one to ride this thing again well patricia houston as long as you don't die everything should be good Ah, oh, the park is doing wonderful ladies and gentlemen we've had thousands and thousands and thousands of guests through our doors all paying glorious amounts of money we've built even more attractions to turn even larger profits and actually i've just been told the employees have built a lovely message out here in the green barren landscape they've written um what, what does that say what does what does that say? oh dear god they're unionizing they've spelt nelp that must be the name of their union well, that just about does it you workers have had far too many happy moments you there random Entertainer Pauline, I'm sorry, you are banished to the naughty worker zone. Unlike guests, you can't die of starvation. You can only collapse out of tiredness. Anyway, here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. The big one million. We're about to do it. We are about to prove once and for all that yes, you can build a park with no money and we've done it. Oh yes, we've done it. Oh yes, and look at that glorious prize. We achieved our goal of having at least one million in the bank and our reward is 696968.9. Ah, oh, what a glorious quantity of money to be rewarded with. But of course, most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, Her Majesty the Queen promised me that I would become Chancellor of the Exchequer. And I've just received the message that yes, it is now confirmed. I am the brand new Chancellor of the Exchequer, the person in charge of the UK economy. And as my first decree, everyone who likes this video no longer has to pay taxes. Yes! <laughs> Perfectly balanced. Now that's how to get interactivity on YouTube. Anyway, thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen seriously a huge thank you to each and every one of you please hop on down to the comment section if you have any more fun challenges that you'd like me to try and perfectly balance inside of video games and of course a massive thank you to each and every one of these amazing patreons and youtube channel members whose generous monthly donations keep feeding my crippling tea addiction anyway if you're sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next look no further than this one on screen now hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you anyway i'll see each and every one of you in the next one have a lovely day and goodbye Bye for now.